So it's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, it's largely because I've been working on myself to try to create space within my own heart and mind um, for people who might find it a challenge to make room in their hearts and their minds for me. And when I say me, I'm, I'm mostly talking about myself in terms of uh, talking symbolically. Um, really, I'm looking at the state of our country right now, the tensions and the fear, the anxiety, the desperation, the hopelessness, the despair, if I haven't said that already. And it's kind of, it's sad. It's sad because it doesn't have to be this way, but we've been lied to our entire lives. We've been, and I don't know if the lies have always been intentional. I think that uh, it's like when a person creates a product and they really, they're not going to say, my product is mediocre and doesn't live up to uh, its expectations. But if you buy enough of it, I'll be able to get the money to actually make the product that I'm promising you right now. <laughs> like no one says that. Like when they put a product out there in the world, they try to make it that the product is the best product because they want people to buy into it. They want to invest in it. And then they want to take that investment. And hopefully, if they're really trying to serve their customers, they want to improve everything about that product. They come out with new iterations that are increasingly uh, better and better and better. So if you look at America as a product, America is built on an ideal, but we tried to profess that we were um, completed, that we were or had achieved that ideal, and we sold it around the world. And we thought, you know, if we could uh, market this ideal to the world, everybody would buy into it. We would be the leader in this ideal. And then we could take everything we've gained from selling that ideal to people, reinvest it into our systems and processes and things like that. And then we would, our brand would dominate the, gov the sector, <laughs> got, dominate the world. But the reality is that our marketing and our branding didn't actually match the product. And so people started leaving reviews and they said, hey, this product says one thing, but it doesn't do what it says. And we're going to complain about it. But the people who were making money off of it said, hold on, man. We can't have them telling people that uh, giving us like these one star, two star, and three star reviews. So then they said, okay, you know what we got to do? We got to pay some people to uh, give us the good reviews. You know, we might even give them the better products, whatever it is. But we got to get these good reviews and we got to get rid of these bad reviews, you know. And so that's what we did. And we continue to do and continue to do. And we eliminated competitors because if we eliminate competitors, then people don't have anything to compare to. You know, you end up having a monopoly on that product. And then even if your product doesn't live up to its expectations, it's still the best thing on the market. And so when people say, hey, it's the best thing on the market, you go, well, I mean, I guess that's true. It doesn't do what it, it's advertised to do, but... It's not a lie that it's the best thing on the market because it's the only thing on the market because they eliminated the competition. And that's pretty much how we roll. Um, and the problem with that is the best way to create the best product is to take all the reviews, the good reviews and the bad reviews. And, and then maybe sometimes even most especially the bad reviews because if you have those reviews, then you're able to say, how can I improve? How can I get better? How can I um, accomplish the things that I set out to do? That's just how it is. But if you just like only want the good reviews, then you never know if you're hitting your mark or if you're failing or whatever the case may be. And then sometimes you learn 
from the reviews and you say, hey, guess what? Uh, we thought that our product did this. The reality is our product is better at this other thing. And it's not, it, it, we, what we aim to do isn't what we uh, are best at. You know what I mean? And America has an opportunity right now to decide are we looking to live into the ideals that we profess and be the best version of what we put out there on the market or or are we just here to say guess what (laughs) we thought we were that we're not that what we really are is a flea market um, where people can sell goods and everything and buy goods and there's no consistency there's no ethos Everyone who's selling everything is selling it under their own, you know, principles or whatever the case may be. But there's no overarching guiding principle that's leading us anywhere in particular. So don't put your hopes on that. You know, just do your best to market your products and sell your products here because this is nothing but a marketplace. And I mean, there's a maybe a place for that in the world, too, because we've been occupying that space for a long time. Um, personally, because I'm here, I'm choosing in my own life to live into the professed ideal, not because I believe that we've achieved it, but I believe that if there's any chance of achieving it, it's going to be because individual people chose to live that ideal. And then they didn't say they didn't make living their ideal contingent upon someone else, uh, being their hero or whatever the case may be they didn't make it contingent upon being in a a particular group and then saying hey our group is the one that holds the ideal versus the other one who you know it's not going to happen that way and i know a lot of people are worried about the election and we're right cause because there's a lot of people who um i think their whole identity is wrapped up in belonging on a certain team and if their team loses, they feel like they're losing and they just can't deal with it because they've lost enough and all the other stuff like that. But I think that, I hope that there are enough of us who are choosing love regardless of outcomes and life regardless of outcomes. And that we, you know, people always go, the politician is always talking about the American people. I'm going to point out, like, I, when I hear people say the American people, I just tune them out to some degree because no one's talking to all of us when they say that. You know, there may be people who are inviting in more people than other, but everybody in America is the American people. So whenever you say the American people and make a generalization about what you know about the American people, you're missing somebody because I know sometimes I'll say, and I know the American people, I'm like, you ain't talking about me, you know, when you say that. So I'm not going to say the American people. What I'm going to say is that we, the people have an opportunity. We always have an opportunity to choose uh, the world that we want to live in by our actions, the choices we make, and how we live into the things that we profess. And at the end of the day, most of us are going to end up on some deathbed looking back on our lives, wondering if there's something on the other side of this. And we're going to, I don't think we're going to have a choice but to be honest with ourselves. I might be wrong. But I I've seen a lot of people die and I've heard a lot of people say things and profess things and confess things before they die. And most of them, in my experience, they are looking to know that they loved well or they loved to the best of their ability. So I would say make choices that look like you're loving well or loving to the best of your ability. Because if you don't, your own soul 
will let you know that at some point. And what your soul tells you about you is far worse than what anyone else can say about you. So anyway, there's that. Have a good day.